Hello, this is Borna from Borna.tv, and today I want to talk about Battle Breakers. The 1.81.1 patch is out for Battle Breakers, and it's a doozy. Let's go through some of the major changes first. The first change is the community suggestion, the replay button. Oh my gosh, it is actually here. The replay button appears when you complete a level. You can collect your resources, or you can replay that level with the same hero composition. Note that if you are using the friend commander, I think it'll just take a random one. Nonetheless, it's a welcome addition, and uh, watch out for your key count, because you'll, <laughs> you'll burn through a lot of keys now with the replay button. The next major addition is the play button. The play button has been overhauled. Now when you click or tap on the play button, you get a sub menu of different options. You can see your next step in the campaign, your daily quests, and also any challenges that you may or may not have done. It looks like Epic is planning to add more to this play button in the future. Next is the Halls of Faded Glory. The halls have been completely revamped. No longer are you able to blitz these halls multiple times per day, but they only have one daily run and cannot be refilled. To compensate for that, the scaling has been greatly improved and you'll get a lot more resources and money per run. Epic claims that this allows them to stay level restricted but provide better rewards as you progress. These also can be found in the play menu instead of the events menu. I'm liking this direction that they're going and putting these things that you do daily under the play button. Also, rewards have been boosted for all halls. So if you got any feedback on this, please join the Discord and give the developers some of it. Next major change is combat balance. The difficulty has been nerfed. Apparently people couldn't handle it. Epic claims that the difficulty curve changes from 1.81 have been significantly altered to be more dynamic and better reflect your current to progress. This will result in reduced difficulty for many players, and it may be a little harder for some players. Overall, I think the scaling has been toned down a little bit. I think people couldn't handle it. I didn't notice it too much, but then again, I'm over level 300, so it probably doesn't apply to me as much. The autoplay eye has been changed. Epic claims that the previously autoplay followed a simple sequence with no logic there's now a very simple autoplay AI. It will attempt to use the correct element for attacks, conserve mana more when fighting minions, and use mana more when fighting bosses. Overall, after doing some testing with the new autoplay, I think it heals a little bit less, although it is very inconsistent. Sometimes I'll get defeated because my healer simply wouldn't heal where it would heal before. So I think they've kind of adjusted things. The healers don't overheal as much as before, but at the same time, you can find yourself on the death screen. It's a weird place to be, but I think, I think it may balance out overall. Epic claims that this AI is not intelligent. It won't try to heal when you are injured or use area versus single target attacks effectively. However, it should have just enough logic to give you more flexibility in how you compose autoplay teams and reduce the amount of mana waste. I have noticed that mana waste is a thing of the past though. Previously with some of these mages and healers, they would blow all their mana on the first level. I haven't been seeing that much of that lately. Next up is friend gifts. I think they actually fixed it. I think it's actually fixed. We made update the friend gifts, including player with large friends list. We're continuing you to work on improvements to this feature so no gifts are missed. I can confirm I've gotten two days of gifts and it feels real good. As a result of the missed gifts, all players will automatically receive loyalty badges, skill XP, and cloud puff cookies in their treasury when logging in into 1.81.1. This reward is silent and will be automatically added to your treasury. This is in addition to the similar composition in 1.81. So if you're wondering why when you log in you got a whole bunch of cookies and a whole bunch of skill XP and a whole bunch of loyalty badges, this is why. A new pet has been added and oh my goodness is way too cute. It's actually so cute it debuffs the enemies. This is the panda, and there are five rescue levels that you need to complete to unlock them. Fairly easy, and I think it's doable by most players. It can be found in the play button, and once you unlock them, you're gonna adore them. There's so many more changes to this patch, I'll try to be as brief as possible with some of the major ones. But I'll put a link to the patch notes in the description so you can read it for yourself. New advanced combat trial levels have been added, found in the play button. If you complete them, you get a battle crystal. And guess what? Some new heroes have been added as a result of this system. We'll save that for a future video, or three. I found these to be fairly simple to do as well if you've got a decent team. Highly recommend Cilicia, she helps in every situation. If you don't have Cilicia, get a good cleric and I think you'll complete these just fine. Formalized poison damage and mechanics. So now, poison is in the game with the assassins. Poison now ignores defense and shields, and it can interact with other skills. I've done some light testing with this and I gotta say, I haven't noticed a huge difference, but I don't have many assassins completely leveled up. If what's on paper is actually true, I think this could be a good addition to those scenarios where you need to strip defense 
defense. And you won't have to rely on people like Dan Go to bleed or someone else to strip defense before you can sick Razor on them. The design and tip says there are thousands of skills in Battle Breakers and many of them were made quite a while ago and can follow inconsistent behavior. We're going to take a look at various mechanics and unify their behavior to make them more usable, understandable, and interactable. Poison is a first step in this direction. Sudden Death was reduced from 100 to 75 turns for normal bosses and 250 to 150 turns for super bosses. The Sudden Death values weren't all that long if you were in a sustained auto team, but they could also feel like an eternity if you were in a manual and hanging out, hanging on by a thread. This brings up Sudden Death to try to improve that situation. Reduce the delay between actions and auto play and auto pop. I have noticed that things are a little bit snappier. Sped up the trap animations so auto can move a little bit quicker. Ongoing changes to test potential options for reviving when your team is defeated. Epic has brought back the mechanic to continue using gems. Now, I was all for them removing this because I thought it added a little bit more difficulty to the game. It got you thinking about things. I think the players who hated it had the, the louder voice. The design intent says we've received all sorts of feedback on Revive and we're testing different configurations to help inform a long-term decision. Overall, I don't like it, but it doesn't ruin the game for me. Whenever I get that Revive dialogue, I always collect and leave. I don't, I don't use my gems to continue. Now, when I first started out playing the game, I used it a little bit because of frustration, but as I got better and and as I played the game longer, I realized that was a huge waste and I think it's a newbie trap. Don't fall for newbie traps. So we'll see where this goes. There have been some UI changes like the rarity icons and the hero inventory are a lot better now and they're actually accurate. The pet summon UI works a lot better and is easier on the eyes. You'll notice that when you click on the pet icon during a fight that you can see all of your pets clearly and what their tiers are. They added some skull icons to the UI to indicate if a level is dynamic difficulty, which means that it scales to your level. This is a great way to easily see if this thing is going to be a little bit harder than you think it is. So be careful. Whenever you see a skull icon, things are going to scale to your level, either up or down. They added some UI indicators to indicate if a level is inhibited, means that it restricts your level, or upgrades are your heroes with a cross sword icon. You'll notice that when you do some of the new challenges that they will restrict you to level one and they will have a sword icon. One of my favorite changes is that the Skybreaker Hero Select UI is more colorblind friendly. It shows rarity and to have less text. It's much easier to determine what type of heroes they are, what element they have, and what rarity they have. Colorblind aside, it's just easier on the eyes. The support a creator prompt has been moved and highlighted in the settings menu. So if you haven't select the support a creator yet, <coughs> use support a creator code Buana. If you haven't selected one yet, you can do so easily in the settings menu now. If you've already used a support a creator code, cough Buana, then it won't show up. The hero store refresh timer has been re-enabled. We've already talked about the Hall of Gold's refresh and how it can only be run once per reset. But now in the economy progression section, they talk about how the Hall of Gold's it will scale gold to your count level to a limit. You'll notice a lot more gold coming in the higher you are. Most treasure maps will now drop more gold and most normal levels will drop less gold. So the design intent here is that they, they, sh they shifted the gold to the halls to make a clearly daily activity to complete. Rather than inflate the economy or adjust what players have already earned, we opted to reduce level gold by an amount equivalent to roughly twice the average playtime of grinding and put it in the halls. We'll see how this pans out. Overall, it looks pretty good in my light testing, but time will tell. And there's a bunch of hero specific changes that I think you should check out. Specifically, the assassins change. Talked about the poison blade and how that works. And some, some heroes have been updated as well. Lots and lots of changes in this patch. It feels like the game got a much needed overhaul on some UI parts. The replay button is definitely my favorite. I like the skybreaker hero select stuff. The UI changes in the hero screen. Friend gifts are finally working. Autoplay, eh, you know, I don't know. The weekly challenges is definitely a, a welcome thing. I like that. It forces you to use a wide variety of heroes and that's a welcome change and the panda that's a panda he's a panda this is one from one.tv this is the 1.81 patch notes 1.81.1 patch notes check it out lots to do lots to discover lots of changes please add me to your friends list as buona.live also please like comment subscribe to the video if you enjoyed the content and join my patreon at patreon.com slash buona and gentle reminder use the creator code buona and when you defeat three bosses in battle breakers i get compensated for that so thank you epic for allowing me to be an epic partner you guys have a great day and enjoy battle Break us! <laughs>